Welcome, and thank you for joining the Mark Montclair's online worship experience. We hope you will be blessed by what you experience today. Feel free to worship and sing along as if we are together in the sanctuary, as we are indeed together in spirit with God and one another. Good morning and welcome to the Mark Montclair. We are so blessed to be gathered together today in the presence of God and to renew our connections to each other as children of God. Remember to like and share right now, like and share this worship experience so that others may join in this virtual fellowship and enjoy the music and prayer and scripture and most of all the word of God from our pastor, the Reverend Leslie Houseworth Fields. Now let us prepare our hearts, minds, and souls to receive the blessings of worship today as we celebrate 140 years of the Mark's ministries in service to God and to God's people. Today and throughout our anniversary celebration, let us gather in worship, looking back to see the paths we have taken and the paths that lay before us. Let us gather in worship to honor those who have gone before us, knowing that God will give us the wisdom to learn from our ancestors' successes and from their challenges. Let us gather in worship to celebrate who we are today and welcome the possibilities and opportunities that God has set before us for tomorrow. Let us gather in worship to worship God, the God who knows us, who sees us, and who loves us. The God of our yesterday, the God of our today, and the God of all of our tomorrows. Let us worship. Come on, if God is everything to you this morning, I want you to stand up on your feet and clap those hands and sing along with us. That God is my everything. God is my everything. God is my everything. He's my joy in sorrow. He's my hope for tomorrow. He's my rock in a weary land, my shelter in the time of storm. Oh yes, God is, God is my everything. Come on, I can't hear you. Put those hands together. God is my everything. God is my everything. He's my joy in sorrow. He's my hope for tomorrow. He's my rock in a weary land, a shelter in the time of storm. Oh, God is, God is, God is, God. to put those hands together if you know that God is your everything everything you need just sing along with us and sing my everything my everything come on sing my everything mm -hmm. my everything come on say my everything He's a doctor in a sick room, yeah. 
my everything. As the old folks say, he's a lawyer in the courtroom. My everything. Come on, sing along with us. My everything. Pat those feet and say, my everything. Like we're in the sanctuary. Everybody, up on your feet. While the musicians take us in, clap your hands, pat your feet. Everybody, come on. I can't see you. Come on. I'm gonna help us sing this. My everything. My everything. Come on and sing. My everything. One more time and say, my everything, my everything. Parker J. Palmer and James Johnson, Corporate Counsel for the City of New York, as they discuss issues of race and empathy on Monday, November 16th at 7.30 p.m. via Zoom. If you are a resident of Montclair or Essex County who needs rental or transportation assistance, child care or elder care support, job training or help replacing appliances and other household necessities, you may qualify for grants to support your needs. Please contact the church office as soon as you can. Funds are available, but they may go quickly. We at The Mark are committed to the education and growth of our youth. The scholarship committee would like to help support the high school students graduating in June 2021. If your child is an active member of the MARC, they are eligible to receive help as they transition to the next stage of their education. For more information, please call or email the church office. Celebrate the MARC's 140th anniversary and your faithfulness to God's work as we continue living our legacy. We ask that you will support our goal of $14,000 above our regular tithes and offerings between November and December of this year by prayerfully selecting one of our giving circles. Even though we are physically separated, we want to stay in community with you. Fill out a connection card online for prayer, contact from a church leader, or any other needs you may have. We are here for you. Happy birthday to all those celebrating a birthday this month. We love you and we pray for your continued safety, health, and happiness. In this time of uncertainty, please remember the sick and shut in in your prayers and with a call or card. That's what's going on at the Mark.
morning, church family. Every year on the first Sunday in November, Christians around the world observe All Saints Day, which honors all the saints of the church that have gone home to be with the Lord. At the mark, we would normally set aside time during the church service to honor families who have lost loved ones. However, due to the pandemic, COVID-19, and with keeping with the guidelines by practicing social distancing, our church building is currently closed. The building may be closed, however, but it's not going to stop us from honoring family and friends of the mark who have lost loved ones during the past year. Today, we observe two of our church members who went home to be with the Lord, Sandra Austin Ben and Gwyneth Graham. We're also acknowledging the lives of individuals that were lost due to the pandemic, which we know the numbers are over 221,000 and still rising. First, I would like to begin by honoring our dearly beloved Sandra Austin Ben, who passed away on October 10th. In 1988, Sandra met the love of her life, Samuel Ben, and on October 27, 1990, they were married at St. Mark's United Methodist Church in Montclair, New Jersey. Sandra was a certified psychiatric advanced practice nurse. She had a private practice serving adolescents and adults in Montclair since 2001. Sandra was very active in nursing in nursing associations on the local, state, and national level. She was a longtime member of the New Jersey State Nurses Association. Despite all of our accolades, Sandra remained devoted to her church home, St. Mark's. She was a longtime member and served on many ministries such as President of the Board of Trustees, member of the United Methodist Women, and served on the church anniversary committee for several years. Sandra believed in giving to others. She was kind-hearted to everyone she met. Sandra's smile, presence, and most of all, her friendship will be truly missed by the St. Mark's family. May her soul rest in peace. Our second church member who went home to be with the Lord, Gwyneth Louise Graham, who passed away on April 15 of this year. She lived in West Orange, but she was a native of Montclair, New Jersey. Gwyneth was a loving wife to Louis Graham, mother to Aaliyah and Tamika, a grandmother to Marquis Jr. and Imani. She was a sister of George Thomas and a daughter to Sister Gwendolyn Thomas. She was a loving aunt and a friend to many. Gwyneth worked at both Newsweek Magazine and Horizon Blue Cross and Blue Shield until her retirement in 2015. Gwyneth was a member of St. Mark's, also known as The Mark, since her childhood. She was in the youth choir and she attended the church Sunday school. She was also very supportive of the church events. Gwyneth was always a sweet and loving person always welcoming and played the role of big sister to others when needed. Gwyneth was left a tremendous, has left a tremendous family legacy. May her soul rest in peace. At this time, I would like to lift up the names of church members and friends who have lost a loved one during the past year. Let us acknowledge all of the lives that were lost throughout the United States of America. Approximately 221,000 people have lost their lives during this pandemic and the numbers keep rising on a daily basis. Nothing in life can prepare us for the death of a loved one. Whether death results from a sudden accident or a sudden illness, it always catches us off guard. Death is so deeply personal and stunningly final. Nothing can emotionally prepare us for its arrival. With every death, there is a loss. 
and with every loss there will be grief. Revelation 21 4 says, He will wipe every tear from their eyes. There will be no more death or mourning or crying or pain, for the old order of things has passed away. May we continue to keep all of the families in prayers. Amen. Praise the Lord, everybody. I'm Pastor Leslie Houseworth Fields of the Mark Montclair, and I am so excited to be worshiping with you this morning. If you have not already done so, I invite you to take a moment to like and share this video on whatever social media platform you're using. That enables us to share the gospel of Jesus Christ with an even wider audience. And if you have not followed us on Instagram, liked our page on Facebook, or subscribed to us on YouTube, I invite you to do so. It doesn't cost you a thing and it helps our ministry tremendously. Today on this first Sunday of November, we celebrate our 140th church anniversary at The Mark. I give God praise for 140 years of mission and ministry in the Montclair community. And would you join me in praying that God would continue to use us to serve this present age, our calling to fulfill. As part of our anniversary celebration, it is our custom to give a special anniversary offering. And this year, as we celebrate our 140th anniversary, we're asking you to give an offering beginning at $140 above your regular tithes and offerings. But we have giving tiers this year and you'll find more information about that on our website. And so we invite you to be prayerful about how you can financially support this ministry. And whether you give on our website, www.themarkmtc.org, or if you give on Cash App, dollar sign, The Mark MTC, or if you mail a check, we ask that you would definitely doesn't make this as an anniversary gift so that we will know that this is your additional support. Thank you in advance for the ways that you will support this ministry. Our goal at The Mark this anniversary season is to raise $14,000 above our regular November and December gifts. And so we look forward to the ways that you will continue to support this ministry with your prayers and with your gifts. Today is All Saints Sunday, and it's the day that we recognize the saints who have gone on to glory, and we also recognize the saints, that we are saints still living here on this earth. If you have lost someone recently or in the distant past, know that we are praying with and for you, in addition to those whose names were listed earlier. We know that there is no timetable for grief, and so we pray that while a day like today may be one of sorrow, that the memories that you share about your loved ones bring you comfort and peace. As today is All Saints Day and the final installment in our series, The Gospel in Disney, there was no other choice that I could think of more fitting for this day than the 2017 blockbuster Coco. Now, let's begin by reading a short verse from Deuteronomy chapter 8 that simply says this, But remember the Lord your God. The first part of that verse, remember the Lord your God. For the next few moments that are ours to share, I want to preach from the subject, remember me. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength and our redeemer. In the animated film Coco, the main character, Miguel, takes a spiritual journey from the land of the living to the realm of the dead. There he encounters his long past ancestors and he uncovers the mystery of his great, great grandfather. In the film, Miguel comes to discover that we have the power to keep our ancestors alive by remembering them. This theme of memory and remembering is captured in the theme song from this film, Remember Me. The lyrics say, remember me, though I have to say goodbye, remember me. Don't let it make you cry, for even if I'm far away, I'll hold you in my heart. 
I sing a secret song to you each night we are apart. Remember me, though I have to travel far, remember me. Each time you hear a sad guitar, know that I'm with you the only way that I can be until you're in my arms again. Remember me. This song won the Oscar for the best original song after the 2017 season. I believe that this song resonates with audiences because it taps into our inherent desire to be remembered. Most of us want to be remembered for good things, but there are some people who want to be remembered at any and all cost. Some people's worst fear is that when they die, nobody will notice or even care. Before COVID, we often measured the content of someone's character, whether this was right or wrong, but we often measured that by how many people would show up at their funeral services and how many people wanted to speak to their memory. In Coco, the act of remembering drives the plot of the film. The film pl takes place on Dia de los Muertos or the Day of the Dead. This was the day before All Saints Day or the day that many of us know as Halloween. In this culture, the spirits of the departed would return from the realm of the dead to the land of the living. And the movie Coco begins with Miguel's family making preparations for this celebration. They prepare lots of food and they place the photos of their loved one on the ofrenda or the altar that they build in their home. And Miguel's abuelita explains that this ritual has helped to keep their family together. Miguel's family, like some of ours, is a complicated one. See, Miguel's great-great-grandfather, whose name is never spoken by family members, was a musician who picked up with his guitar and abandoned the family when Miguel's great-grandmother, Coco, was just a young girl. Coco's mother or Miguel's great great grandmother Amelda didn't have time to cry over what they call this walk away musician. She had to find a way to support herself and her family and so she learned how to make shoes and she passed this skill down to her daughter and to her grandchildren and now this skill was continuing to be passed on to the family. In order to protect her family from the hurt of her husband, Amelda forbade music in the house. A and Miguel says that his abuelita runs her house much like her grandmother. She did not allow them to sing, dance, or even listen to music. Most of their family accepts this prohibition. However, Miguel sees this as a curse because he has a secret passion and a secret talent for making music. At times, he would sneak away to his clubhouse and practice playing his guitar. As the family prepares for this Day of the Dead celebration, Miguel's dog Dante accidentally knocks a photograph of Mama Coco and her parents to the floor. Miguel picks up this photo and notice that a part of the photo had been folded and hidden from view in the frame. When Miguel opened it, he discovered that his great-great-grandfather, the one whose name was never spoken and whose face had been torn out of the photo, his great-great-grandfather was holding the famous musician Ernesto de la Cruz's guitar. Attempting to help his family better understand their history, Miguel goes and gets his guitar and tries to explain to his parents and grandparents that they are the descendants of a famous musician. Abuelita was shocked and furious. She took Miguel's guitar and she smashed it to pieces on the ground and she forbade him to ever speak of music again. In that moment, Miguel was so frustrated and hurt that he declared that he no longer wanted to be a part of that family and he didn't care if they didn't remember him. He ran away to the town talent show where he was hoping to finally make his de debut as a guitarist. But no longer having a guitar, he sneaks into the mausoleum of Ernesto de la Cruz and takes his guitar. It was there that Miguel was transported into the land of the dead. When he's there, 
he finds out that in order to return to the land of the living, he has to receive a blessing from his family. And so his great, great grandmother, Amelda, offers to give him a blessing on one condition that he never play music again. Miguel did not believe he could live that way. And so he set out to find his great, great grandfather, Ernesto de la Cruz. Along his journey, Miguel met a man named Hector and Hector promised to help Miguel as long as Miguel was willing to take his photo back with him to the land of the living. You see, there was nobody in the land of the living who had posted Hector's photo. And if nobody posted his photo, he would eventually disappear. Hector and Miguel set out and they eventually meet Ernesto de la Cruz and Ernesto de la Cruz is excited to meet his great, great grandson. But Miguel finds out that Hector and de la Cruz knew each other in the land of the living. Hector angrily confronted de la Cruz about stealing his music when they were alive. See, Hector wanted to return to his family. He no longer wanted to play with de la Cruz. And after De La Cruz killed Hector, he stole his guitar, he stole his music, and he presented it to the world as his own. If you haven't seen the movie, perhaps you have a guess of what happens. That's right. Miguel discovers that Ernesto De La Cruz is not his great grandfather, but instead it's Hector. De La Cruz had killed him, but Amelda and the family never knew what happened. And so Imelda, thinking that her husband had simply walked out on them, forbade any of them to talk about him or to talk about music. She wanted to protect her heart and protect her daughter Coco from the pain that her father caused. But this caused more pain. While she was doing her best to protect her family, this ended up leaving Miguel in a dangerous situation because Ernesto de la Cruz was willing to do anything to keep the truth from coming out, even if it meant allowing Miguel to die in the realm of the dead. Much like this story, we find that it can be dangerous not to know our history. In Deuteronomy chapter 8, here God is reminding the Israelite people to remember who God is and to remember who they are. It says, take note not to forget the Lord your God, his commandments, his ordinances, and his statutes, which I am commanding you today. In this section of Deuteronomy from chapters 5 to 12, God was preparing God's people to enter the promised land. After 40 years of discomfort in the wilderness, a more comfortable lifestyle awaited them. Instead of transience in the desert, they would not now find stability. Instead of relying on manna, they would now have plentiful crops and livestock. And God knew that with this new and improved life, the Israelites might be tempted to forget their past and forget how God had delivered them. In chapter 6, God instructs the Israelites to pass down the law to their children and to tell their children the story of their deliverance from evil. This would ensure that even after the first generations or those who were enslaved and those who survived the wilderness, even when they had passed off the scene, that the community would still know their story. By retelling the story of what God had done, they would remember that God is faithful. They would remember that God is a deliverer. They would remember that God could make a way out of no way. But they wouldn't just remember the truth about God. They would also remember the story about themselves. They would remember that they were once strangers in a strange land. They would remember the anguish of being enslaved. They would remember that they are called to treat foreigners among them with justice and with mercy. And chapter 8 teaches us that forgetting our history can have dire consequences. God says in verse 19, if you forget the Lord your God and follow other gods to serve and worship them, I warn you that you shall surely perish. These words are jarring. Is God threatened by their lack of allegiance? Is God simply being jealous or could there be more here? 
Perhaps I suggest God requires that they follow him because God knows that if they do not follow God's law and forget who God is and forget who they are, that they would resort to a way of life that is not in keeping with who God created them to be. If they forget who God is and who they are, that they could forget their time as the oppressed and take on the role of the oppressor. Today, our country is facing the consequences of not knowing our story. Or you could argue that we willfully misremember our past. See, we have never resolved our history of displacing and murdering the Native Americans. We've never resolved our history of trafficking and enslaving generations of Africans. We've never come to grip and reckoned with the 100 years of de facto slavery after 250 years of legal slavery. And when we don't know our story and when we don't address our past, we are not able to fully heal in the present. And here's what we have to do in this year. We have to take the blinders off so we can have 2020 vision. Because 2020 vision will allow us to see that it is our past and it is our history. Why black, brown, and native people continue to die disproportionately from COVID. It is our history. Why continue, police continue to shoot black people in the streets without consequence. It is our history that would allow us to elect the most least qualified white man in backlash or as Van Jones calls it, white lash to the election of President Barack Hussein Obama. We have to know our story because if we know the story of our past, we can learn to heal our present. In the movie Coco, Miguel eventually returns to the land of the living, but he was unable to bring with him the photograph of his great-great-grandfather, Hector. He knew, however, that time was not on his side because Coco suffered from dementia and it seemed like she might be dying. And if Coco died, all memories of her father, Hector, would be lost. And so Miguel runs up to his mama Coco and he begins to talk to mama Coco about Hector and try to get her to remember who he was. But in the words that Miguel is saying, they don't seem to be resonating. Desperate to keep his great great grandfather's memory alive, Miguel picks up a guitar and begins to sing the song, Remember Me. And something special happens. As Miguel begins to sing, Mama Coco begins to tap her finger on the chair. And she begins to straighten up in her body a little bit and begins to sing the words to the song along with her great-great-grandson. And the more they sing, the more lucid Mama Coco becomes. Finally, she sings to the point where she perks up and she does something presumably that she has not done in a long time. She begins to speak intelligently to her daughter and her grandchildren and her great grandchildren. And as her daughter, Miguel's Abuelita, begins to cry, she says, what is wrong? Abuelita is so moved by this moment with her mother that all she can do is shed a tear. Ironically, the one thing that this family was prohibited from pursuing, music, was the one thing that helped to bring Mama Coco back to her family. Family on a day, like All Saints Day, we are reminded that we must remember our story. And it's not enough just to remember our story, but we must pass those stories down. Many times we are walking through the world unsure of who we are or where we belong, believing that we don't fit in because we don't understand our story. I remember about 10 years ago, after I had finished seminary, I learned a story that I had never heard in my life. I was trying to figure out what I was going to do after seminary, and one of my aunts asked me if I was planning to pastor or start a church. At the time, I didn't think I would pastor. Maybe I'd become an associate pastor or a youth pastor, but I certainly didn't see myself at the time as a senior pastor. Besides, I had grown up in the Baptist church and there were not many Baptist churches that called women as their senior pastor. 
My aunt said to me, you could start a church. What? Yeah, like Mama Dolly. You could start a church. Mama Dolly was my great, great grandmother. I had heard many stories about Mama Dolly, about her boisterous personality, but I'd never heard that Mama Dolly started a church. Yeah, my aunt told me. She started a church down in Mississippi. The church is still there. She was a missionary, you know. She used to go around from place to place preaching. In all my years, I had never known that my mama Dolly was a missionary. All this time that I had thought I was a third generation preacher and that I was the first woman preacher in my family, little did I know that I was carrying on the legacy of my great, great grandmother, a black woman who down in rural Mississippi in the 1900s decided that she would not be silenced because she had nowhere to go, but that if God had called her to ministry, that she would create a place even if nobody else made room for her. I'm so moved by that story. All of a sudden in that moment, my personality made more sense. The way that I am willing to try to make space, even if nobody gives me permission. And some of you have some stories like that in your own life. The blood that runs through your veins is that of survivors and overcomers, people who continue to put one foot in front of the other, no matter what troubles they encountered. That's why we tell the stories, because the stories don't necessarily keep our ancestors alive. I don't know if they do or not, but certainly the stories keep us alive. We pass it down because when we know who we are, we are stronger and we can hold on to hope. And we are reminded that we don't have to give up and we don't have to give in. We are here because of the ancestors, the saints who went before us. And may I remind you that what you do today matters. That one day somebody is going to tell your story. And so I encourage you to live in such a way that your story makes the world better for people who are coming behind you, people whose names you may never know, whose stories you will never hear, but who will be blessed because of what you and I have done today. On this All Saints Day, may we live with the confidence in knowing that we can be remembered for the good that we do. Let us pray. Gracious and loving God, we are so thankful to you for the people who have gone before us, for the saints who paved the way, for people who believed that there was a way even when they could not see it, for people who were courageous enough to keep living and keep pushing and keep loving. And because of what they've done, we are standing in this place today Help us to remember their work. Help us to remember our story and our identity in you. And help us to live in a way that we leave the world a better place for those who are coming tomorrow. We pray this now in Jesus' name. And together we say, amen, amen. Family, if you're tuned in this morning, and you don't yet know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, I invite you to welcome him into your heart. The Bible says that if you confess with your mouth and believe in your heart, you shall be saved. And so if you make that decision today, let us know. Complete that digital connection card so that we can journey alongside with you. Maybe you already know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, but you don't have a church family. Whether you're watching locally or tuned in from somewhere around the world, we want you to know that you're not alone and that we would be happy to be a part of the community of faith that you're a part of. 
And so if you need a church home, I invite you to click that connect with us button and let us know. Perhaps you're tuned in this morning and you desire prayer. In just a few moments, we are going to continue our worship service with prayer. And we also have a team of people who gather virtually each week to pray for the concerns of our community. And so send us a note if you desire prayer and know that we'll be praying with you. We'll continue our worship in just a moment with song. And as this song plays, I invite you, if you have not done so already, to prepare your elements for communion. Whether you have bread and wine, crackers and water, or whatever you have in your home, let us prepare so that we can receive the Lord's Supper together in just a few moments.
prepare our hearts to receive communion, knowing that we are gathered around Christ's table in the fellowship of the saints, saints who are living and the saints who have gone before us. Jesus understood the importance of remembering. On his final night on earth with his disciples, Jesus knew that they could forget all that he had taught and demonstrated to them. And so he instituted a ritual, a sacrament, that would help his disciples to remember him. While they were together in the upper room, the Bible says that Jesus took bread. And after giving thanks for the bread, Jesus broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, This is my body, which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When the supper was over, Jesus took the cup of wine and he said, this is the cup of the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of these mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us. We remember as we eat this bread and drink this wine that Christ has died, Christ is risen, and Christ will come again. Let us pray. Holy and gracious God, we give you thanks for these elements, for these gifts of bread and wine that you have given to us. Lord, as we receive these elements, strengthen us, empower us, embolden us, to do the work that you have called us to do, to live as your witnesses in the world, to help to usher in your kingdom until Christ comes again and we feast at his heavenly ban banquet. Through your son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit and your holy church, God, we know that all power and honor is yours. Amen. I invite you from wherever you're watching to join in the prayer that Jesus taught us saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Family, I invite you, whether you are surrounded by your family or if you are alone, to now share the body and blood of Christ with one another. The body of Christ broken for you and Christ's blood shed for you. Let us pray. Eternal God, we give you thanks for this holy mystery in which you have given yourself to us. Grant that we may go into the world in the strength of your spirit to give ourselves for others. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Family, again, it's been a pleasure and a delight to worship with you this morning. This week, I'll be praying for your safety, especially around Election Day. If you have not already done so, remember to vote. And we pray that God would guide and keep us until we gather together again next week. Now, let us receive this blessing. 
May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May he lift his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen. I love you and I'll see you next week. Come on, if God is everything to you this morning, I want you to stand up on your feet and clap those hands and sing along with us. That God is my everything. God is my everything. God is my everything. He's my joy in sorrow. He's my hope for tomorrow. He's my rock in a weary land, my shelter in the time of storm.